Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another propaganda car straight from the propaganda ministry here in Denmark with me Imperial Dane and today we have for you a 2 versus 2 on rails and metals yes indeed we are seeing rails and metals once more with of course this building rather dominating things here but nothing compared to this one this tiny fortress able to cover not one but two victory points and a medium yield fuel point making it is probably one of the most important buildings on this map so let's go have a look at our esteemed opponents in the northern corner we are seeing two guns and Kotaspu what a rubbish name but they are there leading the second infantry division towards Festung Brest and who shall be holding them back none other than Vexel of Kav Gruppe Vexel and probably his friend then as well Hauptmann Slathium ready to show those Yankees what war is all about and in fact, let's not tarry about any longer and get straight to things, eh? Sladium and Vexil sending about with the Wehrmacht quarters, getting some pioneers, all good and dandy. Festung Brest being rather one of these fortress cities that Das Führer designated during the war, which basically meant they were to be fortified and held to the last man. Brest was one of these, it was in fact also an important port town for the British, the Allied to capture since most of those in northern Normandy had been blown to bits and so they went to the next ones in Bretagne and of course the German forces stationed there were of course ordered to do their best to ensure they did not fall into the hands this part of the campaign was led by Patton and the Germans were rather solidly digging and besides a few grenadier divisions also had a Falsham Jäger Regiment and Cotasburg goes don't cry for me Argentina I'm not entirely sure what that's about engineers marching about I do believe we are seeing yes two barracks up and I do believe they focused both on the barracks and going straight for these points right side next rather interesting though not linking up with any of these nearby territories but going straight for this house this area pioneers also going for this area in fact and Falsham is joining into the fight and we are seeing a jeep out from two guns as the first unit, whereas riflemen are in the first for Code Tasbu. Most Code Tasbu Tastic, or not? Probably not, actually. And engineers taking up positions in this building, ensuring it will not fall into the hands of the Wehrmacht. Volksmann is joining in the fight. And engineers getting straight back into it. Volksmann is standing a bit out in the open, taking out one engineer, the jeep continuing to. Just firing away with its light machine gun. Volkskrant is most courageously just firing away these engineers while just trying to fire away with their grease guns, not doing an awful lot. Pioneers taking points in the meanwhile. And we are seeing a heavy MG42 taking up positions here. Riflemen right here and they are standing in a bad spot. Going to be gunned down by that MG42. There we go. Suppressed already. One down. Volkskrant is continuing to fight. Conti one down in fact. Riflemen joining in now from the north while the Kotaspu riflemen are forced back, not looking too good for the second infantry division so far, not holding much territory. And they are certainly being forced slowly back by the forces of the Wehrmacht. There's MG42 still standing in a nice position there. Volksgrenade is holding the line here, might ding up positions in this building to ensure it doesn't fall into the hands of the Yankees. And we are seeing something out of the Wehrmacht quarters. A second Volksgrenade team, not a bad move there. Riflemen moving in with a vengeance. And one more false grenadier falls down in the face of this devastating firepower from the Americans. But they are quickly suppressed, or at least one engineer team is one. The riflemen are quick to get out of the range in front of the building, meaning, of course, they can't be found upon by the MG42. But looks like one rifleman might be popping his head out too far. Folks gonna seeing quite a bit of fire. Pioneers trying to clear out the way. Second folks gonna hear team joining in. Rifleman taking quite a bit of fire now. These chap inside the building might survive. Rifleman moving in from the north, getting the drop on these MG42 gunners. Rifleman retreating in the south. Jeep moving in. MG42 taking heavy losses. Will have to retreat. Barely makes it out of there. Engineers falling down. Desperate fighting right here next to this house. Further rifleman marching in. On these are taking up some positions of supreme firepower on these pioneers forcing them back and what is this MG42 setting up here plenty of MG42s in fact up from Slathion but no riflemen so far could backfire upon him in fact right now Vexel is in fact the one with most of the firepower being brought down upon him 
Rifeman here not joining in though, that could actually have been a good move again, you want to sort of coordinate your fight teams when you are in two versus twos and this is rather a bad move standing right in front of the house using a bit of the hedges there for a bit of light cover but still not the best position there we go a much better position heavy cover and these riflemen could actually do with actually joining in with these chaps and getting some more firepower down on this house perhaps forcing the full screen out riflemen snaking about still from the north engineers as well still not taking these two points though not entirely sure that's a good idea and Ralfman moving in from the north will they again try to get up close because that's a really bad move yes indeed not using this pickup truck for cover no instead getting up close but there we go folks kind of so finally taking loss having though reaped a grievous toll on the Americans they've certainly done well and this Jeep hasn't done much at all just been sort of plotted down right there Ralfman out in the open getting cut Oh, by two MG42s, my goodness, heavy losses, extreme losses, in fact, down to half size and barely any survivors and the rest of those chaps. Lots of MG42s marching forward, in fact, only MG42s, no, and folks going to team out for Slathium, in fact. Rifleman continuing, and now Vexel also getting an MG42 flame for us, though, rushing towards this house, scorching the remaining folks grenades, and they will have to get out of there before they are burned alive. Keep getting the flank on those MG42s. Rifleman getting torn apart in the front. Rifleman moving in from the south. Barely any health left. Though they might have to be careful or they might be cut down by that MG submachine gunner. Engineers taking up positions with flamethrowers here. Going to dominate everything that gets close there. Pioneers getting scorched. Rifleman will have to retreat. And we are seeing a medic station out from two guns. Good move. Perhaps a bit late. But still realizing that he's probably going to be suffering a heavy losses. He might as well be trying to minimize the casualties by getting some medics out. So good job there in realizing that he's not too good there. Mines. No, that wasn't actually a medic station there. It's being tried to be laid down, but not the best spot. And Kotas will also getting a medic station. Lots of medics out. Good move there. So in realizing that's going to be of great help. MG42 blasting away this house, but not doing much. German domination of the northern area, MG42 here and the old barn, not quite so empty. And engineers moving in from the north with plenty of riflemen now with BARs and riflemen here taking on these pioneers but the flamethrowers do force them back. And flamethrowers looking very defiant, engineers charging in on these MG42 gunners, BARs as well. MG42 gunners left, forced to retreat while this one still from this house. Continuing to blast away, forcing back the engineers and riflemen also forcible back a bit. Medic though quick to pull up the wounded engineer who is certainly looking quite a bit in pain. Force grenades marching in, pioneers as well. Pioneers though coming under fire from BAR equipped riflemen. And assault forces being marched in, stormtroopers on the field. Not quite from what division, probably some remainders of the 1st SS who were split off from the main force as they retreated through to Claire. And so joining up with these chaps or could be a more of a designated Stosh troop of some of the more veteran grenadiers with whatever elite forces they equipment they can. Master Rifleman no taking quite a bit of fire from the Fulks Gunners and the MG42. Further Rifleman Marine we are seeing lots of BARs from the Rifleman in fact my goodness no grenades though from the Americans that could actually be a quite a bit of help of clearing out those German positions stormtroopers moving in with getting some assault rifles and these riflemen are coming under quite a bit of fire in fact getting suppressed and forced to retreat my goodness good job from Vexiel and a large force again moving out from Kotaspu with flamethrowers rousing triad centers up in the Kotaspu base large force of Americans rather Clumped up though. And what shall we see here? Stormtroopers undermanned though in face of these riflemen. Well, what is this? Bundle grenade right in this huge clump. And my goodness, we are in fact seeing heavy losses for the Americans. I do believe that was about, oh, I don't know, 13 men killed with one grenade. And I do admit I am a bit of a sort of hidden agenda as there have been some people asking since I do say don't blob with the Germans well this is for the Americans don't blob either it's bloody stupid and as you saw there 
one bundled grenade and half the American force there went up in a cloud of smoke and dust and dirt. First gun is under fire. These medic stations, while nice, are perhaps not so cleverly positioned. They are in fact awfully close to the front lines. Rifleman team up, though, just as the medic himself was cut down. First gun is getting fired upon. Lots of medics just carrying down all those wounded from that bundled grenade. So that's always a good thing, ensuring minimal cash, permanent cash is there. Rifleman moving in. Why is he not using cover? My goodness. Down two guns is any clever there. And a grenade being dropped on the MG42. My goodness. Clearing out both. And let's just stop again a bit to explain the physics behind that, of course. Grenades are, of course, things that blow up. And, of course, buildings are sort of three-dimensional three in this nature. So if there are troops all rather clumped up together in the nearby vicinity of grenade, it doesn't really matter where they will die. So, for example, here. They were three and they were rather clumped up right around here. One grenade, boom, they're all dead. For example, if we say for some reason one of those chaps was right here, perhaps firing away at some rifleman with a submachine gun, only those two here would have been killed. So, thing to keep in mind. And we turn to the action. The Americans having cleared out the positions of the action, in fact, forcing back most of the troops. More stormtroopers, though, marching in. Apparently, some stormtroopers again, equipping the best of their grenadiers with some gear and what is this mortar fire slathium getting in some mortars which probably means we have some creek bags and packs in fact we are seeing several packs out and storm no kampf kampf sent up for vexia lots of folks gonna deers interestingly though nothing else though in terms of support no weapon support center which could in fact be of great help for the americans grenades on the stormtroopers right in the midst of them oh my goodness two stormtroopers down uh, forcing the rest to retreat further right from on the spot pioneers pulled back as well mortar though continuing to blast away mortar rounds for the fatherland Riflemen getting dropped and these stormtroopers well getting torn apart again you don't want to be out in the open against troops with automatic weapons and there we go mortar round hitting one team forcing it down but these stormtroopers are forced to retreat as well this area being quite open folks gonna is marching in hoping to pluck the hole in the defenses Riflemen oh dear taking shots from the mortar will have to retreat come on there we go Rifleman pressing through here, but coming under fire from the MU-42. Not sure why this Rifleman team is not joining in. And a Stu-42 Sturm Aubitze 42, ready to open up with some good solid howards and munitions. And those medics are just continuing to pull away the broken wounded bodies of the Rifleman. Ensuring they can get quickly out into the fight. Good move there. And further riflemen, my but goodness gracious, at the same time we are really seeing human wave tactics that would be the pride of any Soviet commander. Of course, there would also be a huge casualty list to follow. And this medic station will not hold much longer though. And the pack clears it out. Riflemen pushing through here, circling around. In fact, flamethrowers looks like to have cleared out this pack. Which of course means that a pack is in the hands of the Americans. Defensive artillery being called in, Slathium really being the defensive anchor, but again without much infantry, he's going to have trouble holding all of this. And this pack could in pack could in fact fall into the hands of the Americans and be used against this 242. Rangers on the field. Rifleman taking quite a bit of losses from this 242. Rangers now appearing. Bazooka rockets firing and missing absolutely devastatingly. And one ranger being flung out with the building with extreme force from a Stu 42 round. Further losses. Another one sent flying through the air over the cliff and onto the road. And further finding here. Mortar team forced back. False grenades are the only thing holding the line for Slathium here. Good solid push from the Americans and a large American force here. Airborne joining in, we might be seeing some recoilless rifles would also do good against the Su-42 and Vexel doing the clever thing, getting some veterans here as well for his armor again for the Wehrmacht veterans he won for your armor is absolutely paramount, it does decrease the damage so absolutely brilliant there and another pack, my goodness, Lithium is not good at keeping his support teams at the right spots, he's keeping them too far ahead and as a result they are getting cleared out, Rifleman hitting a mine and now a Defensive artillery, my goodness, registered just on the spot. These riflemen are getting torn apart. Get out of there, Katasbu. His 
control over infantry and unit preservation is not good at all. And Stu42 getting some excellent shots off on these riflemen, grabbing the pack. Airborne focusing on the wrong target. My goodness, why is he not using those recoilless rifles against the Stu42? This is an absolutely horrible assault rifleman and airborne getting slaughtered needlessly. Further riflemen though moving in with Rangers tearing apart these folks grenadiers. One team already forced onto the retreat. And these folks grenadiers are not looking good either. Storm who was joining in. Assault rifles once more being equipped. Will we be seeing some bundle grenades? Oh my goodness, a huge blob and what will happen? Bundle grenade right into the midst of this. And oh my bloody hell. That was extreme. I do believe we are seeing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 12 kills once more. Perhaps more. That's at least 12 kills from that. Stu 42, I think. At least a quite. My goodness, that was absolutely devastating again. Do not blob. My goodness. And if you see a blob, ask the Wehrmacht. Get Stormtroopers, get Stu 42s, and blast the living snot out of them with heavy munitions. But that was absolutely Devastating and reckless, my goodness gracious, the Kampfgruppe Wechsel is doing ter great and the Americans are doing terribly. Bodies everywhere, wounded, dead. I'm pretty sure there's going to be a de few dead body parts, but my goodness gracious and no medic station this time around to pull the wounded out of the dead. This is absolutely terrifying. And for the Americans to pull through here as we are through the 50 minute halfway through mark. They will need some serious anti-tank assets to clear out this 242 now with Vigency 2. Keeping it a light machine gun, they will be needing some armor either, some armored cars or a tank. They will really need something to push through here because infantry will not make it. It is absolutely getting torn apart by this 242 by the stormtroopers and it is absolutely infantry death zone. They will need armor, they will need something to push through solidly. For the Wehrmacht so far, they will just need to just get some more Stu 42s and just blast away that infantry as it throws themselves at it. I mean, this is Soviet conditions, and just like the Soviets found, they suffered grievously in the face of the Wehrmacht. And Stormtroopers just continuing to tear apart, and the Stu 42 just continuing to rake up kills. My goodness gracious, this is absolutely horrific. That infantry two for Wehrmacht infantry. Stormtroopers coming under fire from riflemen. Riflemen not getting much kills. No grenades either. Stormtroopers out in a slightly exposed con position. Stu 42 opening up on these riflemen, getting one kill already. And my goodness, in the wrong spot, taking further kills. The Stu 42 just continue slaying an absolute elite gunner here in this Stu 42. And my goodness, they don't stop blopping. Just further huge waves of infantry. Wave after wave. And this has been the Soviet Union. I'm sure they would have gotten a medal for just this certain level of tenacity. But at the same time, they are suffering absolutely horrific casualty rates in this. They really need some armor. And let's just go have a look through the other side. Vexel with registered artillery, nothing else. His anti tank guns really being left out behind. And now Kotaspu, airborne infantry and anti-tank guns being airdropped, tearing through here. Mines being dropped. This area once more being secured by Slathium. Opening up on Kotaspu's forces, they're moving through here. No fire up from these airborne. That could perhaps have been used to just get up here and drop perhaps a satchel charge here. But no riflemen are moving in from the south. Absolutely poor management and now huge force of two guns infantry moving in from the east hoping to get a sort of decent landing on Slathium forces registered artillery being called in hitting absolutely nothing Airborne crawling closer and flame throws and grenades now clearing out this barn of Slathium's MG42 my goodness solid assault there good coordination between the two Stu 42, they're moving in, getting once more a few good shots off and getting out of there before the Americans can get the drop. Pack recruit by Kotaspu. 
Opening up on the Stu 42. And the Stu 42 once more absolutely slaughters American infantry. Now finally getting hit by the pack. A bit of damage. American infantry continuing to just getting torn apart. Slathium just sending in pioneers. And uh, Rangers moving in. Will they drop a grenade right here? Might clear up. Slathium's MD. Come on, do it. But no Enemy two guns down. just continues to lose infantry. And grenades. No, a satchel charge at infantry. My goodness, what is he doing? Post gun is looking like to clear out Kotasbo's anti-tank gun. Our forces are taking casualties. Oh goodness gracious. And we are seeing riflemen moving about here again. Large forces, no support in any sort of real sense. Anti-tank and cleared out by these courageous false grenadiers. Now dealing with these airborne who are not dropping grenades at them. That could actually be something to sort of clear out things. Engineers moving in. This is absolute chaos. Riflemen moving in. And comrade two guns because I'm pretty sure they must really feel at home in the Soviet army. Too bad that is not in the game perhaps as of yet. Might be with a sequel who knows. Rifman once more moving into the face of this 242. Now with armored skirts with Schürzen. And once more absolutely getting the drop on them. Tearing them apart. My goodness. Make sure that 242 is a true hero of the fatherland. But Slathium really needs to work on his packs as they just keep getting into the hands of those Americans. Artillery now being called in. Artillery everywhere. In fact, how to shells hitting everything but the enemy. Airborne getting cleared out. Bundle grenades on these airborne. Oh my goodness, they survived by the grace of something. But I'm not sure. Perhaps the will of Stalin. And let us go have a look at two guns with artillery with rangers. But I do think an off-map combat group might be what he needs so he can get some tank destroyers and more registered artillery just tearing apart everything. No further medic stations though. Again, I'm not entirely sure why I didn't get another one. And two guns with an armored car. Which might in fact get the drop on the Wehrmacht forces if they're not seen a single Wehrmacht vehicle there. Really besides a jeep, so that might be the trick. And the T-17 moving on this rather damaged 242, this 242 veteran. Skirts falling off. At least in most parts it have. Main gun destroyed, stunned this T-17, turning about it like a predator. And apparently failing to penetrate the rear armor, that's a bit unfortunate. Again another failure. Will the next shot? No, and the second 242 moves in. Although they shan't be able to do much, the T-17 just continues hoping to get that final kill. Will it get that shot in? Will it clear it out? Apparently not. Rifleman and Rangers moving in. T-17 continuing to be a nuisance. And spreading out the assault guns. Good job. And oh dear three. Rifleman cleared out by the Stu-42. Further heavy losses inflicted. Second, that Stu 42 just continues to stand. Rangers suffering losses, riflemen suffering losses. They should really should get out of there. And the Stu 42 is lost, but I don't think that's acceptable casualty rates just to knock out a single Stu 42. This T 17 so far have only managed one kill. My goodness. And it is not looking good for the Americans. T-17 gone. Stu-42 is dominating the battlefield alongside this veteran C-3 infantry again. A bit of solid armor and things might turn around for the Americans. But no, they just keep throwing infantry at it as if though they were either in the Soviet Union or World War One. In the case, they are suffering heavy attritional losses. And as you can see, the Germans are absolutely batting it away by now. Having absolutely no troubles dealing with all of this infantry thanks to their support weapons, their Stu 42s and elite infantry. It's 
So a bit of quiet once more as the Americans are just throwing whatever infantry they can muster. My goodness. Pretty sure the second infantry shall have to be pulled out of this after this fight for reformation as they have suffered absolutely devastating losses in some of their companies. And Fulskan is taking heavy losses. Solid mortar grenade right on the right rangers. Again, mortars are quite good in the defensive and the offensive. So good job there by Slathium's mortar. And Riflemen again just blowing them up and just getting them torn apart by now. Grenadiers aren't from Slathium, in fact. Interesting move. Not bad. And now Airball moving about apparently with Veterancy 1. Could perhaps get the drop on this Stu 42, but no, the Stu 42 gets the drop on them. And Fulton is with submachine guns and stormtroopers with assault rifle move in, unleashing a hailstorm of bullets on these airborne, tearing them apart. And we are seeing something moving in. Air reconnaissance, not entirely sure that's going to do much. A bombing run or a straping run might have been of help. And a large force again moving in, perhaps getting off some sticky bombs on this 242. And a tiger, Mixhell having summoned up. Hauptmann Fuss apparently to clear out the way. Sticky bombs just being sticky to this 242, clearing it out. Damaged engine, but the tiger keeps it coming, opening up with his 88mm gun. And again, registered artillery forcing the Americans back. And my goodness, I'm hungry. Going to have to get something to eat after this. And not looking good for the Americans, calling in support anti tank guns. Not using this mortar, for example, to sort of help them all this 30 caliber. Bad move. And let us return to Vexel with his armor, his infantry, although it looks like he's lost one storm to a team, most tragically. And we are seeing a bunker going up here, probably a repair bunker. We are losing ground. Airborne moving in, and airborne coming under fire from the Stu 42. The crew, though, being a bit panicking. American forces getting up for another huge wave assault, it looks like. Comrade two guns and Comrade Kotaspu. Apparently two officers on the land from the Soviets somehow, not entirely sure how though. And the Stu 42 taken out, finally a decent victory for Kotaspu without sacrificing huge amounts of infantry. Airborne getting torn about by the Tiger. And Hauptmann first reporting, an infantry section reporting destroyed, and again, just a note, infantry blobbed up, in fact, takes more damage from heavy machine guns, again, that's another reason besides just 242s and burn grenades, being able to expertly tear you apart, heavy machine guns, in fact, do more damage the closer infantry are, and in this case, a lot more, in fact, and the Tiger as well, just blasting them apart, my goodness, certainly not professionals fighting here on the Allied side and for that I do apologize but again I do feel the need to also point out that blobbing for the Americans is bad since apparently some people have been asking for it so there you go and don't worry we will be seeing some better play tomorrow I promise I've got a really good one for you an exciting one at least I hope you'll find it exciting and Kotaspo having pulled out running away in tears having seen so many men dying and now the Americans also making it for that last one huge assault straight into a horde of s and a strafing run expertly used by the sub commander apparently more competent than Kotaspu good use there absolutely slaughtering this clumped up German infantry force so again blobbing on either side is bad but these Americans are absolutely getting torn apart by the Tiger and looks like everyone is pulling them back and let us just speed things up a bit are ready for blitz An observation post and a um, Howard, sir. That was actually not a bad move, but I think an off map comic group would have been better. Anti tank guns being recruited, grenadiers under fire, engineers as well. Barely any points left. So 
Tiger coming under fire. Direct shots though, goodness gracious. Armor piercing rounds might be the end of it. If they actually have the munitions for it. And rear shots, bad move, bad move actually. You do not want to expose the rear armor. Anti-tank guns just continuing their unholy job of blasting apart the rear of the Tiger. But now German infantry is ready and there we go. A total loss for the Americans. Not good at all. A final last stand by these anti-tank gunners and riflemen. So there you go. Blobbing is bad no matter side what you are on. Throwing a cross infantry on over ground. Open over open ground. My goodness, I must be more hungry than I my pen can formulate words good enough. But there you go. Support weapons good, but don't just rely on them as you saw Slatham in fact was rather dangerously picked apart several times losing anti-tank guns and MG42s in fact had the opponents not been blobbing up so badly they could in fact have spread out infantry more well and in fact get the drop on Slatham torn him apart in fact leaving only Vexil to hold the line so that could have been done mines from Americans perhaps to hold what little they had could also been good but really bad moves from the Americans all around Although good strafing run there, of course, blowing on either side bad. Tiger not looking very good at all. Stu 42s not good at all again, but they did really good again. Bun grenades, Stu 42s, if you're seeing blobs, get those things and tear those blobs apart. They were absolutely terrific, and in fact, I don't think I've ever seen a Stu 42 shot do as much damage as it did there, ever. So absolutely brilliant, and thanks Vexual for showing me that. So there you go, I hope you enjoyed this fight, if you didn't, well worry not, I shall be bringing hopefully some more interesting fights tomorrow. And if you did, well worry not, subscribe or send in a replay of your own, of course you're always welcome to that, of course, recommend it to your friends, and of course also to mention, we are close to 500 subscribers, and if you get to that, I will be doing two casts that day, so of course, subscribe, subscribe, tell your friends, or even conscript your friends, so there you go, I hope you enjoyed this, and cheers, and of course, do not blob, it's bad, it's... Very bad. Cheers.